Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. How you doing, John? Hey, everybody, and hi, Art. Good to see you again. You'll notice, by the way, that I'm wearing a flannel, nice warm shirt because the weather's changed. It's coming up to your favorite time, Halloween. Well, I'm getting a nice warm, balmy breeze off of the beach, so (laughs) to each his own. In front of your (laughs) lovely painting, yeah. Hey, um, in my garden, um, we've already picked a couple of pumpkins, and there's a few more growing. Halloween is, what, uh, within days? And the real question is, wow, has Halloween changed? Am I correct? It has quite a bit. Yeah. I remember uh, as a kid uh, not only dressing up and going around the neighborhood with what seemed like hundreds and hundreds of other kids out in the streets. But I also remember a thing called Mischief Night. Do you remember that? Do you ever do that in your town? No, you mean like TPing houses? Yeah, yeah. The, and it was Mischief Night was theoretically the night before Halloween. Oh, no, we didn't have that. Uh, oh, okay, you, well, that, maybe the, I hung around with a, a bad crowd. Basically, we had juvenile delinquents, and, and once a year, everybody wanted to act out, you know, like play act uh, being a juvenile delinquent. I guess that's what it was. Yeah, because the rest of the year they were perfect. That was what it was. Uh, anyway, but Halloween, uh, when we were kids, in fact, even, let's see what year it was, even 20 years ago, I can remember um, looking out on a porch and seeing uh, kids crisscross the street with flashlights. Uh, and, you know, the street was filled with children and some parents hmm. tagging along behind them. But today, uh, with the COVID-19 thing uh, on us, I don't know what's going to happen to, to trick-or-treating. Well, it's kind of interesting, uh, two things about how things have changed. So, first of all, we live in an over-55 community, so uh, there's <laughs> no trick-or-treating any place. And th- every so often, you'll see one of the houses that has some artifacts that the, uh, 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 the, the, the people there put up because maybe they expect a grandchild to come over. Uh, so there's uh, maybe five pumpkins out of 30,000 different locations. But uh, my uh, a son, who has the two young grandchildren, who are five and eight, uh, signed up, uh, uh, his wife signed up for a, uh, a drive-through haunted house kind of thing. And what they did was they decorated the car with uh, strings of uh, uh, orange uh, uh, lights and they put, you know, the faux uh, uh, um, uh, white uh, paper on there uh, to show, uh, like cobwebs and that kind of thing. And the kids both dressed up, and they put light. They put their heads up through the uh, 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 moon roof, and they drove through uh, a haunted area that somebody had set up in a field someplace. Uh, you know, with the uh, monsters coming out and things like that. Yeah. So that was their Halloween. So it was made for a drive through It was made for drive through and uh, it actually cool. it was quite well attended. We know about it because they called us and said, you know what, we'll be over in 15 minutes, just look out the front door. And they we saw this uh, uh, vehicle come by that had all this weird stuff and the kids pop out of the roof. So they had a, a, a good time uh, given the fact that uh, they weren't going trick or treating door to door. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's that's a great uh, a great alternative to what they used to do with the scary houses. Somebody mm-hmm. would build in their garage, you know, and you go through, maybe donate some money or candy or whatever for the right. for the charity, and then you go through, and the people, parents would pop out in in costume and scare you, and things like that. So, I think that's a good uh, adaptation, if you will. But I. I'm concerned, what I'm really concerned about, Art, is the fact that the stores look like, for the last three, four weeks, they look like there is no COVID. Right. They've got all the costumes out. They've got all the decorations. They've got everything as if nothing has changed. And yet, mm. I know things have changed. I wonder if their sales have gone down, if we'll see in a couple of weeks that Halloween sales, I don't think they break out Halloween sales, but I wonder if we'll see Halloween sales were, well, were low this year. Well, I have to tell you that I saw a lot of candy in all the stores, but quite frankly, if, if I were a parent of young kids, 
Yeah. The chances of me allowing them to walk around door to door and uh, uh, getting a candy that other people have touched that might have COVID and, and you know, that stuff lives on wrappers and stuff like that for a while. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not so sure what I would do with that, but I, I will tell you what we're doing with, again, the two youngest ones. Uh, their parents are taking them away for a weekend uh, to a, like a B and B, but it's really not, but it, it's a, it's a house that's available for rent. Uh, in uh, Palm Springs and it has a pool and they're taking their kids away from the neighborhood so that on the nights of Halloween when other kids might be walking around they won't have to say no you can't do that it won't be oh, safe and we made up that's interesting we made up uh, goodie bags that have tons of candy in it so that they both uh, they'll take them with them and then uh, on Halloween day night They'll give them the bags that are already filled with the trick or treat stuff that they might have otherwise collected in the neighborhood. That's great. So uh, that's great. They're going to still get their candy. They're still yeah. going to get their sugar highs, but uh, they're not going to have to collect them place to place. So you live in a more rural area, so I don't have right. kids around my house because we're in an over fifty five community. But you're in like a, a country road kind yeah. of area, but you do have grandkids nearby. What do you, what are you doing for Halloween? Well, the, you're right. We don't get any uh, trick-or-treaters here. Mm -hmm. uh, just nobody in the neighborhood. Not a lot of kids in the neighborhood. So my uh, daughter and her husband take these grandchildren uh, to their old neighborhood, which was a development. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of houses uh, mm -hmm. relatively close by. And they go out and they trick-or-treat with friends and their old neighbors and friends and stuff like that. And as far as I know, they're going to do that again this year. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine it'll be a little bit different, but I don't know how. Um, but I want to go jump forward to after Halloween. Okay. The most important, the most important part of this holiday for me, Art, is the after Halloween when all the candy is on sale, <laughs> and I can get all that candy at half price. It's great. Oh, well, that's terrific! And you know what? Anything that we collect here, I'm going to send off to you because uh, I've, uh, in anticipation of Halloween, I've started my intermittent fasting diet. So, oh, so wow. candy is oh. uh, candy is off the. Uh, uh, although uh, nobody ever gave me halva for uh, a trick or treat <laughs> when I was a kid, but uh, halva I, I would have a weakness. You went to wrong the wrong, the wrong uh, neighborhood. The wrong neighborhoods, yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay, good. So, well, happy Halloween. No, wait, uh, no, 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 as long as you're talking about, because I remember what candy's like. Uh, <laughs> what are your favorite uh, candies? Uh, anything with chocolate. Oh, anything. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Anything with chocolate. Dark yeah. or darker milk? No, either. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, what about Reese's peanut butter cups? Oh, oh to die for. Oh, gee. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to know the, the next time that we uh, socially distant meet each other, I'll have to find out something that I could hand to you on a stick. Uh, <laughs> now I know. Thank you. Well, that, that sand, putting something on the end of a stick sounds like mischief night to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Which I never had. Yeah. So now I'll have an opportunity to uh, uh, have an act two of Mischief Night, which I never had in my act one. <laughs> but I think that this, this conversation has probably gone on about five minutes too long, don't you think? Uh, ten minutes too long, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, happy Halloween. Thank you, Art. I tried to say that about five minutes ago, you know. Oh, okay. Right, and since Good we still have time, since we still have time. Okay, be careful, and remember, go out and vote. Uh, that's right. Now that's scary. <laughs> yeah, well, what are we going to talk about next week? Oh, no, it's still going to be before election. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.